Hi, everyone. Today, we're here with Jeff Cottrell, internationally known comedic writer and satirist. He's been on the international and Canadian scene for two decades. And today, we're going to quickly talk about his new book, Hate Story by Dragonfly Publishing in Australia. And the upcoming launch on November 13th, which is just a week away at High Root Restaurant in Toronto. Jeff, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Ivy? I'm excellent. Now, you just got back from two, three weeks in the UK, Northern Ireland, and the other side, Paris, um, to be specific, uh, doing a bunch of tour dates again. That's right. I was touring with uh, Australian poet Skylar J. Winter and her book designer Neshka Turner. So we were promoting our books from Dragonfly Publishing, and we called it the Decent Beings Tour. So yeah, we went around England first. Um, we went to Birmingham and Leeds, Leicester, Peterborough, um, a bunch of other places. And then we uh, took a detour to Paris, did a gig there at Spoken Word Paris. And then we flew to Northern Ireland and we did gigs in Derry, uh, Belfast and Falkara. So uh, that was a little more than two weeks for me. They did a little longer than that, but a little more than two weeks for me, we hit a bunch of places. It was really exciting and exhausting at the same time. Beautiful. And um, now this book is really important and um, you've developed quite an international audience over the years. and this is your first full-length prose novel. Uh, your launch is very special because it's going to be, this is a hardcover copy in my hand, releasing that special edition. You have incredible reviews, but this is an important book. Uh, tell us why, what makes this book so relevant and, and explain how it addresses cancel culture to our audience in a nutshell. Okay. Well, uh, I think, uh, what makes the book uh, important to me, at least, is that it's talking about a lot of things that people don't want to talk about. And I don't want to go into all of them because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but yes, definitely the question of cancel culture. Now, I have to point out the term cancel culture. I, I try to avoid that term now because it's become so hackneyed and cliched and mostly because it means different things to different people. So but what it means to me when I refer to it is uh, online shaming. Like when people on Twitter, they suddenly become self-appointed vigilantes and they start shaming this person because they said something that was offensive or that they deemed offensive. And even if it was bad what they said, it seems the punishment is way out of proportion to the offense. And that I find that disturbing. I find it disturbing that uh, a lot of, you know, pretty... Uh, smart, open-minded people I know uh, think that's a good thing, that, you know, it's just consequences and accountability. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with consequences and accountability when the person actually deserves it, but when I think of uh, certain cases, uh, you know, where it's just, it's just wildly out of proportion, and that's what disturbs me, and that's a part of what inspired the book. Yeah, so if I understand, um, basically cancel culture can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, but one of the elements you honed in on was the online and public shaming part in hate story. Absolutely. Yeah, that was, uh, that was important. And you, you, you see cases that have happened over the years, like uh, famously Justine Sacco made a bad joke on Twitter. And then when she got off the plane in Africa, hours later, she found she was a nobody. She was uh, vilified worldwide, literally. And I'm not defending the joke. I'm just saying that just seems a little extreme. Even even the case of what happened to Amy Cooper a, a couple of years ago, who did behave atrociously in that video, but I was disturbed by the way she became an instant pariah, like, worldwide. And uh, ironically, <laughs> something similar happens in my book, but I wrote it before that happened to Amy Cooper. So I'd like to think I was, I was being quite relevant in that way. Uh, you are definitely ahead of the times. I mean, in 20, I think it was 2018 or early 2019, we talked about HuffPost and the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer scandal. People right. can find that video scandal on the RT <laughs> Media Network. And we were definitely calling out um, kind of, uh, well, the topic was moral, moral policing and social media and the arts. And mm. here we are today. And that's exactly, you're definitely ahead of its time. And that brings us to one of the last questions of this very short interview is, who would you say then the protagonist in the book, Hate Story, is Paul Shortage? Who would you say he is? Uh, how did you build that character? And, you know, what does he represent? 
Okay, well, Paul Shorter, he's one of the protagonists anyway, but he's definitely the victim of the book. And I guess I see him as the epitome of the innocent victim who uh, causes these, you know, um, mob um, shaming and uh, uh, pylons that sometimes happen to people. And somebody who's just, he's the person who's just eternally misunderstood and who doesn't mean harm, but there's something about him that puts people off. And uh, there's a certain celebrity that I was thinking of, but I'm not going to mention because just mentioning the celebrity can get you in trouble. But I, there was a certain celebrity I had in mind who repels people naturally, and I had him in mind when I was making up Paul. Paul is also, to some degree, he's a caricature of me when I was a kid and had absolutely no social skills. Some people say I still don't, but I mean, back when I was, I really didn't when I was, uh, when I was young. And also there was a kid I knew in, uh, in middle school who just did not talk, showed little emotion, and he was mocked a lot for that. And it was really hard to, you know, read what he was about. So I had a little bit of that in, uh, in mind when I created Paul as well. So there's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of um, uh, sources that he came from. Right. And so basically, I think it would be fair to say he represents um, us, the average internet user who can be bullied, can be trolled, can be like cyber bullied, trolled online, and it you know probably isn't deserved, but that their life can be destroyed, or at least you know publicly, work-wise, personally, and of course mental health-wise. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it can happen to any of us. And that's what I've, I've been saying, actually, for years. It's like when people say, oh, it's just consequences and accountability. Every time this happens to somebody, they deserve it. And well, it might happen to you. That's what, you know, some people don't understand. This could happen to you. You could say the wrong thing or you could say the right thing and people just misinterpret it and read it wrong. This could happen to any of us, you know. So e Exactly. And, and that's the thing about, again, you know, Still, as many of us know, the schools and um, anyone raising children or teenagers knows that cyberbullying has gone completely out of control. And it's, a, it's a, as often technology is ahead of the law uh, mm -hmm. in how it develops. So it is a problem. Um, uh, on, and the book does address your book, Hate Story, addresses some very heavy topics regarding mental health and uh and you know suicide warning of course to everyone out there but it, it's very realistic however it's also hilariously funny in and and i want to point out that that's one of the things i really personally like about your style is that and i think a lot of your fans will agree is that you are able to address daily topics and also difficult topics with humor and that makes it digestible for people and um and and so because when we're dealing with such heavy topics it's hard to talk about them and i, I want to say that uh you know the way the book is written is really cool is very dynamic with the use of fonts color and uh you know you you literally feel like you're reading people's text messages social messages on uh, their dms the pub the posts and and it kind of weaves you through what life is really like so if you're saying paul shortage represents that this could happen to any one of us being cyber bullied and who's on the other side doing it um and then you get to find out in the book of course but the the journey of reading this book kind of feels like you're really in his shoes yeah that's what i was going for and that's what the main protagonist jackie that's what she learns because, you know, she gets this image of Paul from the cyberbullying, and there's this horrible website that's been sullying Paul's names for years. So she originally gets that one-dimensional and two-dimensional image of Paul that doesn't tell the whole story. And that's why she goes to interview people who knew Paul. That's when she gets to know who Paul is and starts to step into his shoes. So that's really Jackie's learning experience throughout the story. Yes, and, and finally, I'd like to add, um, it's interesting because... At first, Paul Shortich appears to be a two-dimensional character, and this comes back to a previous point, but he really isn't. And, and you had something to say about that. I mean, as he develops in the book, and of course, so social media has a two-dimensional component to it, has a well-rounded character. What would you say about that element? I guess it's, it's a way of commenting on how we're all more than we appear to be. And, uh, you know, Paul, because of the way he looks and the way he acts and the way he's presented by other people, 
we get this very incomplete picture of Paul, and Jackie's the only one who apparently has the guts in the end to find out who the real Paul is. Well, I mean, she's assigned to do that, but still, she gets obsessed with it, and and uh, you know, it's just it's just a way of showing that we all have these parts of ourselves, of our personalities, of our character that others don't see. You know, we've all been spoiled in some ways, and I guess we've all suffered in some ways, and nobody ever gets the whole picture just from, like, a 280 uh, character tweet, you know? Absolutely. So that brings us to your live event um, on Sunday, November 13th. Come for dinner at High Roots, 6 p.m., and show starts at seven. Now you've got a great lineup of people joining you. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to them? Absolutely. So uh, we've got a bunch of guest performers, uh, readers and uh, singer songwriters. We've got my friend Heather Babcock, uh, the author of Filthy Sugar. She's going to do a bit of a of reading from her book or from her new book if she's working on a new one. I don't know. I just not don't mean to make assumptions. Uh, we have got Kari Marin. Um, who writes really funny, geeky uh, songs about pop culture. And she uh, is, was well known for a while in the uh, sci-fi lit community in Toronto for like regular performances. Uh, we've got Timothy Carter, who writes YA novels, very funny YA novels. Sean Peaver, another local singer-songwriter. Um, Neil Trainer, very 60s influenced singer-songwriter. And Monica S. Kubler, um, who is known as a poet, as a fiction writer, and as an editor with Rue Morgue magazine. So that's a great lineup. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it as well as being part of the show. Yeah, and there's going to be uh, live music as well. Come at 6 p.m. for dinner. High Root Ethiopian Restaurant at 2050 Danforth Avenue. That's at Danforth Avenue in Woodbine in Toronto, Ontario. And uh, great food. And then 7 p.m. the show kicks off. And uh, I'll be hosting it myself as well, Ivy Reese. Yep. Which will be cool. Thanks for inviting me to do that. All right, Jeff, it was great to have you on the show. And we almost forgot to mention, actually, it's going to be the launch of your hardcover, hardcover. edition. How can That's we forget? Right, hardcover. Yeah. Do you and, still want uh, me to do a reading from the book or I mean Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. Give us give us a taste, but leave us wanting more. Of which course. Isn't hard to do. So uh yes, yeah, so I'm gonna read a bit from chapter one, which is really the second chapter, because the first one's called chapter zero. And yes. basically, I guess all you have to know is his Jackie is starting her research on Paul Shortage and um there's a website called fuckpaulshortage.com. So she's just mm. exploring that for the first time. So an introductory letter to visitors in Plain Times New Roman. Welcome to fuckpaulshortage.com. Welcome! Happy face emoji. This website is a tribute of sorts, but not that kind of a tribute, winky emoji. It is a safe web space where people can share their stories, their rants, their curses, their vents, their pain, whatever they want to share, all about that malodorous tit, Paul Shortage. Do you know Paul? Did he annoy you a lot? Did he creep you out? Did he hurt you in any way? Did he make your life a living hell? Sad face emoji. If so, then you're at the right place. This is where we gather to bask in our dislike for this horrid, pathetic little man and all that he stands for. So please post on our message board, my friends. Email us your story. Even write up a poem or paint something to express your rage and hurt. We're not picky. Happy face emoji. Anything you can contribute to this shrine, this homage, this honest and full tribute to a man who has ruined so many lives. Lots of love, Avenger of the Week, website founder and editor, Spitter, Spitter's the parody of Twitter in the book, at mm. Avenger of the Week 81. On a left sidebar are links to subsections, stories, essays, reports, forum, and miscellaneous. Jackie clicks on stories, scrolls down a list that seems to go on forever, and then randomly chooses a piece titled Paul and His Stupid Sweater, dated August 22, 2014, 2014 and authored by site user Tony Day. So I went to high school in Mississauga, Ontario with Paul Shoreditch. He wore a lot of goofy clothes, and some of us like to call him Furley, like Mr. Furley from the old show Three's Company, who used to wear all the bad clothes. Well, there was this one sweater Paul wore a lot. It was awful, even by 80 standards. It was all green with these blue stripes. Really? Thinks Jackie. A sweater? That's a hell of a long way from ruining so many lives. 
Jackie wonders if this is a random guy who stumbled on the website and recognized Paul's name. Bored with Tony, Jackie backtracks to the previous page. She scans the list, which includes such headings as the way he slurped when he drank something, and that fucking singing, and what a looser, and couldn't play softball for shit. Then she backtracks to the reports section. At the top of the list, dated October 17, 2019, is the heading, The fucker is dead! Now we are free! Written by Avenger of the Week. At last! At last! The fucker is dead! Happy face emoji. Forever will it remain so. It turns out that Paul Shortage had a little accident. What kind of an idiot just falls from a building? Laughing emoji. How hard can it be to keep a window closed? Well, it doesn't matter. We are free. I just found out that his funeral is happening on Monday. It's at Peace House Funeral Center in what used to be East York, Toronto. I can't imagine who would want to go to this thing. Family? I can't imagine that he had any friends unless they were masochistic sociopaths. Winky emoji. You know what would be a fun thing to do? If a lot of us showed up for the funeral and made a mess of it in some way. Happy face emoji. Show anyone who was fucked up enough to show up what everybody really thinks of Paul. We can make a real statement. What do you say? Avengers write-up has more than 130 replies. Many of them have headings like, Let's do it! And great idea! And Paul was a scumbag everyone needs to know. One even reads, You are a national hero, Avenger. Jackie cannot find a single reply that suggests the protest is not such a good idea. She stares at the screen. Her jaw hangs open. Her eyes are wide. Jesus, Paul. What in the name of God's balls did you do to all these people? And if you want to find out, you got to buy the book. It's Kate Story, available in paperback and hardcover starting next Sunday. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. That was Jeff Cottrell. And we will see you live and in person this Sunday, November 13th. And please, Thank you, if you like this video, you're welcome. Share it to your friends and give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you.